അല്ല നീ ഓക്കെ 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 she has completed ug from government ayurveda college trivandrum and pg from government ayurveda college kannur madam has written so many articles in various national and international journals and presented various papers to so i would like to invite you ma'am hi dear st- hi dear students hope you can hear me so today we are going to uh, discuss on a very important very interesting topic which is the manas see according to ayurveda manas has different dimensions no a person a purusha you all know shraddha the purusha chaturvamshadi da the purusha all you know okay a person a purusha has three dimension what are the dimensions one is a physical dimension that is about the dhatus uh, etc next is a psychological dimension that deals with the mind and next is the spiritual dimension so manas has both psychological and spiritual dimensions okay manas is having both psychological and spiritual dimension and the manas communicates with the body so it has a certain link with the physical dimension too so the first point which you need to make clear that manas has spiritual as well as psychological dimension so we are going to deal with a simple discussion on the concept of manas so according to the syllabus you need to study all these things etymological derivation synonyms definition then physiology uh, objects functions physiology of manovaha shrodhas all these you need to study according to your syllabus so we are going to discuss each of these things i think uh, you students you like stories okay so i am going to explain the whole concept of manas with the help of a story so listen to the story carefully there are hidden meanings there are different dimensions for each sentences so you have to listen the story carefully okay we are going to start the story about a rishi called gautama see the rishi once upon a time there lived a sage named gautama he was a man of brilliance he knew that indulging in external pleasures will block his path to moksha you all know what is moksha okay when you uh, get your mind under control it's very difficult to control your mind right you presently are not thinking about uh, manas only huh? you will be you will be thinking about your breakfast etc so it's very important to control your mind so uh, i'm sorry for the interruption uh, many people are waiting in the waiting room and it's very disturbing um many people are coming by and i need to admit everyone that's why sorry to that's why sorry to ah so ah so he was a man of brilliance he knew that indulging in external pleasures will block his path to moksha so what he did he detached himself from worldly pleasures he quit his home and he went and lived in a forest why he didn't stay in his home because he has a sympathy for his mother he has a sympathy for his siblings he may be getting good food 
so the inclination to any of these things will abstain him from getting moksha so he detached himself from worldly pleasures see he is not trying to control his mind he is just escaping he detached himself from the worldly pleasures and quit his home lived in a sim- in a forest and then he did hours of meditation even without breathing and was on his way to moksha what is the importance of meditation during meditation you are wide awake right but you are not seeing you are not listening to any sounds you are not seeing anything you are not smelling anything it's a conscious withdrawal from senses so the mind consciously withdraws from senses at the time of meditation so that you won't be seeing anything okay so the sage knew that art so the sage left his home went and lived in a forest and started meditation even without breathing and he was on the way he was near moksha attaining moksha and one day he saw a pregnant deer chased by a hungry lion crossing a river uh, crossing a river the deer gave birth to a deer kid deer kid is called phone right and the mother deer died out of compassion the sage saved the deer kid and brought him to home so he was so compassionate and he uh, he found pity he uh, developed pity for the uh, deer kid and he brought this kid back to home and then what happened ah slowly deer become his whole world so this person this gautama sage he was trying to control his mind by escaping from all the worldly pleasures and now what happened now what happened the deer became his whole world that means the sage began attaching to the deer during bath during prayers every time he was away from the deer he was so anxious and so what happened so he cannot do anything whenever he is away from his pet he will try to uh, reach back to his pet thinking some cruel animals might attack them uh, he is a uh, this deer kid is a very uh, very vulnerable kid so his thoughts everything his thoughts his actions everything centered to the deer previously you have to note that all his thoughts all his actions was to control his mind to concentrate on his inner self so that he could attain moksha now what happened his entire mindset changed in every thought every actions everything his mind was concentrated on the deer kid okay and then day by day he became more and more anxious and his strength declined he knew that he is aged the deer, the deer kid is uh the deer kid is only in a growing age so he became more and more anxious about the safety of the deer kid and gradually he became very weak and ill see the problem is with his mind hmm? he is anxious for the deer and the manifestation is in his body he became weak and ill and at the last time of his death he died again anxious for the safety of his pet and he was reborn again as human he remembered his previous birth and new attachment with the deer has forbidden him from getting moksha see have you heard about satya buddhi if a person has more amount of sattva guna in his mind he can remember his rebirth deeds that is called satya buddhi it is explained in charagam sharira sthanam so he remembered his previous birth and knew that the attachment with the deer has forbidden him from getting moksha so then what happened so in this birth in this birth he he didn't escape from the situation see in the previous birth he escaped from the situation he didn't try to control his mind he was escaping from the situation of his home but in this birth he knew that escaping from the situation was not the 
uh, original idea or not the uh, not the right decision so what he did he detached himself from the external world and in order to detach himself from the external world what should, what should he do the wind intias are the windows to the external world we perceive external world with the help of our indriyas so he consciously withdrawn he closed the windows intriya windows to the external world and he concentrated on his inner self alone so he remained deaf dumb and detached actually he was hearing but he was not transmitting that hearing things that seeing things everything to his uh, inner soul so mind is transferring the information to the inner soul so with your eyes open with your eyes open if your mind decides that you are not seeing you should not see then your atma will not see so it is a mind that transmits the information from the external world the indriyas will collect the information from the external world it will give it to the mind and it is a mind that connects that gives the information about the external world to the atma so the mind decides what to enter what not if you have a control on mind then you can decide what all sensation should reach you what all sensation should affect you many sensations you can get you can receive many sensations because you are because you are living in this world but your mind can select your mind has the ability to select what all things should reach you so at last he reached his final goal of moksha so that was the story about the gautam message now we can and now we can uh, go into the theoretical aspects of manas okay i'll be reciting the stories each time what are the synonyms of manas what is the etymology of manas there are two etymologies see mananat manaha that which thinks is called manas so the sage was sitting there the sage thinks that he need to attain moksha and that is a final thing he need in his life that thought who is thinking the manas is thinking and for what manas is thinking it is for the atma liberation is for the atma jeevatma should join with the paramatma that is our ultimate aim and who is thinking the manas is thinking for the atma because atma cannot think so the manas thinks for the atma nor your indriyas can think your eye cannot think your ear cannot think your uh, skin cannot think it is a mind that thinks and hence it is called mana mananath manaha and next thing is manyate nyayate anenedi manaha so the manas thinks and also manas gathers knowledge so you get so you you are seeing a cow and you know that that is cow and you can uh, you can always say that uh, this is not a pig this is not a goat why because you know so manas not only thinks but also knows and differentiates manyate nyayate anenaiti manaha and then what are the synonyms of manas see ati indriyam punar manaha sattva satnyagam cheta ityahurege tat arthatma sambad ayatta cheshtam cheshta pratyaya bhudam indriyanam so you know that the sage was passing uh, through the forest and he saw a deer he saw a pregnant deer there a uh, drowning and she gave birth to a small deer kid and what made the sage save that deer kid it is a compassion and where does this compassion comes from does uh, is this compassion coming from his eyes his nose his skin no the compassion comes from his mind and because of the compassion in his mind the sage is forced to act depending on the compassion and the sage went and saved the deer kid see the compassion of mind is responsible for the action so 
ati indriyam punar manaha mana stands above indriyas it is not uh, manas is sukshma tara to indriyas it steps a uh, uh, it steps ahead of other indriyas and it is called sapnya sattva and then it has different arthas tad artha atma sampad why because manas has chindyam vicharyam uhyam dheyam sankalpyam different arthas what your in, uh, your indriyas your eye has only one artha your ear has only one artha but your manas is having different arthas chindyam vicharyam uhyam like that so ati indriyam punar manaha means manas is superior to your sense so again sattva sapnagam it is otherwise called sattva cheta ityahuregi otherwise it is called cheda tad arthatma sampad it has different arthas cheshta pratyaya bhudam indriyana this manas is responsible for stimulating your sense organs and stimulating your motor organs so ati indriyam punar manaha sattva sapnagam cheta ityahuregi tad arthatma sampad ayat cheshta cheshta pratyaya bhudam indriyana and then about synonyms of manas see sattvam it's a synonym sado bhavetvam means that which is existent manas exist and that alone is a synonym for manas sattvam chetas that which is responsible for special knowledge so special knowledge manas since manas imparts special knowledge it is called chetas and then comes chittam chiti jnani again it's a it's a uh, it's a thing for knowledge perception and it is called chittam so there are three synonyms sattvam chedas chittam what is the etymology manyade nyayate idi manaha okay and then what is the definition see the sage is able to meditate so meditate which means at the time of meditation he doesn't see hear or smell anything around him so there is so much of things happening in front of him right when the sage is meditating so many things will be happening in front of him uh, and so many noises he may be hearing so many noises uh, maybe some storms etc but the sage is not bothered about all those things but is the sage sleeping no the sage is not sleeping he is purely conscious he is with full of mind but he is not seeing anything happening in the external environment why because the manas only concentrates now on self not on indriyas when the manas concentrates on indriyas you get indriya jnana you get the external uh, knowledge knowledge about the external world so manapurasarani indriyani artha grahana samarthani bhavandi though you have a very good eyes though you have a very good ears though you have a very good nose with the without the help of mind you won't be able to attain senses or you won't be able to appreciate senses see manapurasarani indriyani artha grahana samarthani bhavanti okay and then comes the another definition lakshanam manaso jnanasya abhavo bhave vacha sadihi atma indriya arthanam sannikarshe na vartade by virtyan manaso jnanam sanithyat cha vartade so this is about the sequential knowledge so what all you need to uh, attain knowledge about the external world you require indriyartha then you require indriya to notice that indriyartha and then you have to transmit that indri, uh, that uh, that information to the manas and the manas will communicate that information to the atma so if manas is not present there if manas is not there even with the existence of a good indriyartha a good indriya and atma everybody's atma is very good huh? we are all alike in case of atma when we talk about atma we are all alike like right? so in case of very good indriyartha in case of very good indriya but if the manas is not present the knowledge will not happen so if the knowledge is not happening then you have to say that the manas is not there okay that's what it is explained in this sloka lakshana manaso ho jnanasya abhavo bhave eva cha so whether you get knowledge whether you do not get knowledge it depends on the manas excuse excuse me i need to attend somebody else and then satihi atmeendriya arthanam sannikarshe na vartade vaivrityad manaso ho jnanam without manas even if 
all these things are present you won't be getting knowledge only with the help of manas you will be getting knowledge okay and what happens during sleep during sleep the manas is not concentrating on inner self right manas just uh, manas is fatigued and it just sleeps that's why it is said bhutatma sobada prabhu the only person who is active during sleep is atma so manas also sleeps indriya also indriyas uh, uh, because the uh, indriyas also fatigued that's why uh, the definition of manas is saying yadatu manasi klande karma atmana ha klaman vida vishaye pyo nivartende tada sobiti manavah and since there is no activity there is no concentration to the inner self there is no concentration to the external world sleep is simply useless and that is why it is called nindya sleep is not useless okay but now in this ayurvedic context since we are not doing anything during sleep we are not doing moksha sadhana karma the sleep is considered nindya hmm nindya de idi nidra okay and then properties of manas there are two properties for manas you are you all know what are the properties anuttam athacha ekatvam do guno manasaha smitaha so the manas is anu the manas is eka so the manas is anu how can you say that the manas is anu see you all are familiar with merging videos right so you are shooting a film using a single camera so you the camera is your manas right so you are shooting a film using single camera so each picture you take will come one after the other right when you are using a single camera to capture the pictures each picture will come one after the other because at one time you can only take a single picture so at last you will get a sequence of images which is meaningful and at the same time if you are shooting with different cameras a single thing with different cameras what will happen eh? the see different cameras if you are using you when you merge it you can you you won't get a a uh, a chain of pictures a simultaneous sequencing of pictures why because it will give right to superimposition hmm? when only one person is coordinating you will get a a clear picture if there are different persons coordinating you won't get a clear picture okay so we can consider that manas is only one and then anuttam so see imagine uh, see from the story the sage thinks about the deer right the sage uh, his whole concentration is now on the deer and then uh, he was praying then he thinks about the deer oh my god i uh, i left praying so he started immediately to pray again he will think about the deer or oh, some deer, uh, some tiger has attacked it again he will think about his work he uh, prayer so manas moves from one thought to other one thing to other very fastly and that is because of the anuttva if you are too huge you cannot travel faster right your movement your momentum will decrease hmm? so mass is inverse ah uh, uh, yes up your momentum will decrease right so like that because of the minuteness of mind the mind can travel from mind can work very fastly so imagine uh, we can cite the example of acharya charaka what ajara charaka says is that you are eating a jalebi i don't know what uh, what what you people say about jalebi okay laddu you are eating a laddu hmm? you know laddu is yellow in color laddu is sweet laddu is texture good laddu has a smooth texture and uh, uh, when you take when you have laddu you can appreciate both color of the laddu taste of the laddu texture of the laddu but you are not confused why because a single mind is appreciating is connecting that the single mind connects your tongue with the atma your eyes with the atma your uh, uh, your skin with the uh, skin sensation from your skin with the atma who is coordinating it is a single mind and you feel that you get the information simultaneously why because a mind is so small and mind can travel so fast from your tongue Uh, uh, carrying your information from your tongue to atma to your skin to atma etc so the mind travels very fastly hope clear hope you got a clear idea so anuttam athaja ekatvam do gunu manasaha smritaha manas appears to be many because of the swiftness okay 
manas appears to be many because of the extreme swiftness in action and that swiftness is because of the anuguna of manas okay and then about the arthas what are the arthas of manas chindyam vicharyam uhyam cha theyam sankalpyam eva cha yet kinchit manasotniyam tat sarvam hi artha sapnakam so everything which can be known by manas can be told as the artha of manas so the first artha is chindyam kartavyadaya akartavyadaya va yer manasa chindyade so you can think that you are going to america now that's just a thought it should not have any background you can just think you are going to america or you have become the miss world or mr world like that so chindyam is just a thought the sage thinking about whether to pray or return to phone he is always thinking about the deal and then what is vicharyam vicharyam upapatti anupapatti bhyam yet dimrishyade there should be some logical reasoning some logic in vicharyam see there should be some logic means the sage deciding to quit his birthplace to keep himself detached from the world he know that the sage know that stay in the in his home staying in his home may be a distraction to him the sage know that he knows two things he can't control his mind and the second thing is he will have more distractions in the home so he decided to quit his home and go to the move to the forest so logical reasoning is a vicharyam who is reasoning the mind is reasoning okay and then what uhyam yet sambhavanaya uhyade so he is speculating about a condition so the sage while he was praying uh, he will speculate that oh my dear is so uh, so uh, helpless maybe some tiger uh, attack it so that is it's not true but he is speculating that something may happen at that particular situation so that is uhyam uhyam can be uh, can be uh, a knowledge tool too okay uh, uh, we are uh, we are uh, Uh, we are uh, just thinking about speculating about the black hole we are speculating about various things in the constellations that all hmm, comes under uhyam then what is theyam theyam bhavana jnana vishesham to concentrate on a particular subject first case that the sage concentrated on moksha the second case the sage concentrated on deer whenever you concentrate your whole attention will be on that point of your concentration okay in whether in studies either in family either in other things whenever you concentrate your concentration your thoughts everything will be everything will be circulating around that particular point of concent co concentration just like the stars just like the planets surrounding the sun okay and then comes a sankalpam sankalpam gunavattaya doshavattaya va avatharana vishayam see sankalpam is more like likes see at the at the beginning at the beginning Uh, the sage the sage uh, sages good and bad thing likes and dislikes was moksha sadhana karma versus likes and uh, others versus dislikes that means he disliked living with his family and he liked living in the forest and the next time when the mentality of the sage changed when the concentration of the sage changed to the deer what happened his likes and dislikes changed now he likes to spend his time with the deer rather than pray rather than to attain moksha okay sankalpam is more or less inclined to likes hmm? we also uh, have that problem we have different like different perceptions of good and bad at different situations in our life okay and that is sankalpam and manasodniyam idi indra nirabheksha manograhyam so uh what all things that manas knows man, uh, the what all things that manas is able to know that all comes under arthas of manas so let us recollect chindyam vicharyam chindyam means you can think anything vichara means there should be la some logic in it chindyam vicharyam uhyam means you are speculating a thing chindyam vicharyam uhyam cha theyam means you are ability to concentrate sankalpya means your thoughts your likes and everything will change according to the a uh, particular time according to a particular time okay yet kinjit manasodniyam tat sarvam hi artha sapnakam and then functions of manas what are the functions of manasi indriya vigraha karmam 
ಮನಸ ಸ್ವಸ್ಯ ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಊಹೋ ವಿಚಾರಶ ತದ ಪರಂ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರವರ್ತದೆ ಸಿ ಅಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಂಪೆಲ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಂಪೆಲ್ ಟು ಸೇವ್ ದ ಕಿಟ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಅಭಿಗ್ರಹ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮೋಟರ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಜಂಪ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ರಿವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ಸೇವ್ ದ ತೀರ್ ಕಿಟ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ವಾಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ಐಸ್ to scan the entire world so that there are no tigers there hiding there there are no uh, wolves hiding there in order to save the deer kid so indriya abhigraham means the mind stimulates both sense organs and motor organs to indulge in its function okay indriya abhigraham and what is indriya nigraham in the second case he closed his windows right he closed the indriya windows so the manas knows to control the stain indriyas from the external world that is called indriya nigraha he only concentrated on the so the manas has the ability to both stimulate the sense organs indriya abhigraham and to stain the sense organs indriya nigraham okay so they are the two functions of mind again third function is uha ability to gas possibilities so in the second case the sage understands that it is his escapism to the forest lead him to the uh, uh, lead him to rebirth hmm? why because the first thing he need to attain is control of his manas so now without attaining control of his manas again if he move to the forest he may end up in the same situation so whether in forest or in his birth place he need to control his manas so that is uham his uh, his ability to guess possibilities if i go there this will happen if i go here this will happen like that okay and what is vicharam heyo upade edya vikalpanam so the sage what what did the sage do he decided eh? it may happen in uham he thinks that if i go there it may happen uh, if i stay here uh, it can happen so that is uham and what is vicharam he decided that yes i am going to control my senses and uh, uh, that's possible for me i'm going to control my senses and stay in my birthplace because uh, birthplace or forest both are same for an uncontrolled mind okay that is vicharam so there are four karma uh, karmas of manas indana indriya abhigraha karma manasaha tu asya nigraha uho vicharasha tadaha param buddhim pravartade okay and then comes very important topic which is manovaha srodas is there a srodas is there a srodas for the manas to function yes because manas has arthas and in order for this arthas to reach the soul it should have some pathway right so when an individual is in thoughtful stage that's the definition of feeling i think if we are in thoughtful stage we are wide awake and we are experiencing kama krodha dukha bhaya etc things are called karmas of mind we have already said it's called introspective functions of mind and the channels used for these functions is called manovaha srodas so manovaha srodas because of their in, because this sparsha the two things they are uh, distributed entire our body like so the mind mind since it can function both as a uh, sensory organ and as a motor organ the mind has intimate connections with each and every cell of the body and so manovaha srodas is distributed to all over the body imagine you are uh, you are in a frightened situation and you immediately start to sweat eh? you sweat your whole body right not in the head not in the eyes only because an emotion can influence a whole body according to modern what will happen immediately when you uh, when you have when you fear about a situation what will happen immediately your stress the, your fight and flight system will get activated right so and the autonomic nervous system has control over almost all body functions almost all body parts and so the mind the emotion the limbic system the brain the emotional pathway can uh, can have an effect on whole body right so manovaha srodas is distributed to my point is manovaha srodas is distributed to almost all 
cells of the rhodium. Excuse me, I need to enter somebody. And then, ah, what are the roots of psychosomatic disorders? See, shariram ki api sattu manuvi priyade sattu amcha shariram means mind has a relationship with body and body has a relationship with mind so if you have some uh, uh, have you heard about copying mechanism for somebody who's having uh, cancer therapy undergoing cancer therapy etc so if somebody is diagnosed with a terminal illness his mind he will get depressed right so the body illness can affect on the mind and if you are depressed if you are very depressed that depression can affect your body just like the sage the sage developed signs of anxiety uh, signs of illness uh, leanness why because he was always anxious about the deer so does he have any problem with his physique no he doesn't have any imbalance with his doshas but his imbalance was was with his mind he developed anxiety and that anxiety was communicated to the body because shariram ki api sattva manuvidiye de sattvam cha shariram mana mano artha buddhi atma chedi akhyatma dravya guna sangraha shubha shubha pravati yashu aja mana sattu chedi mantam tatra mana soho mano buddhi sha daima samana ati hina mikhe yoga ha prakriti vigati hedo found you need to study only that sloka what mana sattu chedi mantam you know we have already discussed that chintyam is an artha for manas thinking is a uh, is an artha for manas and when you have an adhi yoga you have studied about hina mithya and adhi yoga right you have studied already studied uh, asadmendriya artha samyogam prajnabaradam and parinamam as a cause of diseases right three causes for diseases so here samana ad, asadmendriya artha samyogam you have studied uh, adhi yoga of ice eye yoga of eyes mithya yoga of eyes uh, that can lead to eye diseases okay like that if you are uh, if you are thinking more that means ati yoga of thinking and that can lead to a mental disease see sa hina ati mithya yoga of mano arthas whether it is chindyam whether it is vijaryam whether it is uhyam whether it is dhyayam see if you concentrate so well on a particular thing that can also lead to a disease because it is adhyoga okay so manasastu chindya artham tatra manasoho mano buddhehi cha ta eva samana ati hina mithya yoga ha prakriti vikriti hetavo bhavanti okay and derangement in derangement symptoms what happens when the mind deranged shilam asya vyavartade what is shilam your habits will change balam hiyade what is that balam your uh, strength your immunity will decline have you heard about neuroimmune endocrinology that's a new axis right neuroimmune endocrinology so when the nervous system is under threat it can communicate to the endocrine system and to the immune system this functions as a as a uh, this functions together they are dearest friends okay balam hiyade bhakti vipariyate your inclination will change sarve indriyani upatapyande you will develop hallucination phobias etc and vyadeha apyayande and so these are the functions of deranged mind when you get a problem with your mind you start developing all these symptoms and speaking about mind we cannot uh, avoid the three gunas right sattva rajas and tamas you know that human human mind has three attributes which is sattva rajas and tamas they coexist they are mutually nullifying they are mutually uh, supporting etc okay and depending upon that depending upon the permutation and combination of the sattva raja and tamoguna we can have broader classification three types of mind sattva buddhi sattva sattvika rajasika and tamasika that uh, if i included that alone in this presentation it would be uh, going a day class so i have uh, omitted that portion i am just concentrating on mind and since i cannot uh, cannot uh, exclude that that's why i'm saying one slide trividam dukhalu sattvam shuddham rajasam tamasam you know that rajas rajas and tamas are mano doshas and sattvam is a mano guna and then sattvam is a dosha uh, which because it is it has kalyana amsha rajo guna is sadosha why because it's anger brain right? and tamoguna is 
ഓൾസോ ദോഷജ ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് മോഹാംശം രാഗം രാഗാദി രോഗാൻ അല്ലെ രാഗം ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ലൊക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് മനസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് വേർ ഇസ് എ മനസ് ലൊക്കേറ്റ് സനയോഹോ മധ്യം അധിഷ്ഠായ ഒരസ്യ ആമാശയദ്വാരം ചത്തുരജസ് തമസ അധിഷ്ഠാനം ഹൃദയം സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ക്ലിയർലി സെറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഹൃദയം ദി ഓർഗൻ വിച്ച് ഇസ് സിറ്റുവേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ദി തൊറാക്സ് ലോർജസ് മനസ് വെരി ക്ലിയർലി സിറ്റുവേറ്റഡ് വെരി ക്ലിയർലി എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ബൈ സുശ്രുതാചാര്യ ദെൻ ഷരംഗമംഗം വിജ്ഞാനം ഇന്ദ്രിയാണി അർത്ഥപഞ്ചകം ആത്മാജ സഗുണശേദ ചിന്തം ച ഹൃതി സംസ്കൃതം ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബൈ ചരകാചാര്യ സി ചരകാചാര്യ ഓൾസോ ക്ലിയർലി സെറ്റ് ദാ മനസ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ മനസ് ഇസ് സിറ്റുവേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ഹാർട്ട് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ വേല ശിരസാൽവാന്തരഗതൻ സർവേന്ദ്രിയ പരം മനഹ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദി ഓൺലി കോഡ് ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ യൂസിംഗ് ടു ടെപ്പിക് ദ സാന ഓഫ് മനസ് ആസ് ശിരസ് ഓക്കെ ശിരസ് താൽവാന്തരഗതം സർവേന്ദ്രിയ പരം മനഹ ബട്ട് ഡു യു തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് മൈൻഡ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ലൊക്കേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ഹാർട്ട് do you have any opinion that mind is located in heart see at the time of stress at the time of stress when you have a fight and flight system we experience palpitation right we feel it in our heart though the brain the autonomic nervous system the medulla oblongata limbic system your motor uh, your uh, frontal cortex everything is firing everything is responsible for the changes we experience that in heart okay we feel it we feel palpitation we feel that our heart is running uh, heart is uh, in our hands like we feel that and the brain remains idle so that is why acharya thought that la acharya explain that the mind locates in the heart okay the mind functions through the brain we know that we know the neurotransmitters responsible for emotion you all know serotonin dopamine the happy neurotransmitter dopamine serotonin responsible for depression uh, then um, about acetylcholine this is also a pleasant hormone you all know uh, the emotions are linked with the neuromodulators uh, new nervous system the neurotransmitters etc but by the action or by the effect of these neurotransmitters by the effect of this nervous system the, we feel it in our heart that is why the position of mind is considered as heart okay originally it is a brain because now we know the functioning of neurotransmitters the brain as a central controller everything we knows now okay and i am not saying that brain is a mind mind functions through the brain why because mind is anu you can see brain right mind is anu so the mind functions through the brain brain is physical and mind is metaphysical according to ayurveda Hmm? mind has a spiritual element so the mind functions through the brain just like atma functions through our sharira okay mind functions through the brain and the sana of mind can be considered as heart because we feel it we experience it through our heart though this all are the uh, play of the brain okay thank you that's all about the presentation Thank you. Rashmi, can you hear me? Hello? Rashmi? Dr. Rashmi? So you have any doubt? Anybody? have any doubt so let us wind up right